Chicago, like most big cities, has its fair share of unsolved crime. And in most of these cases, somebody saw or heard something. It could be a suspicious person, a car driving away from the scene, or simply overhearing somebody talking about the case. With your help, we can put these criminals behind bars where they belong. Here in Chicago, we have too many unsolved murders. We need your help. In these cases, the police department is only as strong as the citizens that get involved. Oftentimes, all the detectives need is a tip, a start. Somebody to call in and say, I saw something. Any little information that you know can be the impetus to solve the entire case. On tonight's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the unsolved homicide case of 24-year-old Jennifer Ponton. On the night of April 15, 2015, Jennifer and her friend were driving around Chicago's uptown neighborhood. It was there that the vehicle she was driving in was mistaken for a local gang member's car. The car was fired upon multiple times and Jennifer was struck. Here's her story. Jennifer was happy. She was a happy little girl. She loved her sister. She was just a normal, everyday little girl. I always had a lot of fun with her. We had our share of fights, but she was definitely took on the role of big sister, never let anyone mess with me. <laughs> Jennifer's personality was um, kind, caring, loving. She just wanted to be friends with everybody. We met freshman year, riding the school bus together. She was sitting by herself, I was sitting by myself. We both were like, hey, awkward. We're on our way to this big school. I'm gonna sit with you. And then we became best friends since then. She did have quite a bit of friends that she tried to go out with every once in a while. I know she went out with her coworkers. She really liked all of her coworkers. She made a lot of friends there. I met Jen at Cracker Barrel. I actually trained her when she started, and we became pretty quick friends after that. She was so full of life and just always happy and friendly. Everyone loved her. She just lit up the room. You couldn't help but smile when you were around her. She's always smiling, always. Just, she's never without a smile, and her two big dimples showing. She just had this contagious laugh, head back, mouth open, ha ha like you just couldn't not laugh if she was laughing. She was a family person, always had the kids with her too, um, barely ever was without them. Jenny and Marco had a child and then she got pregnant with another one that she lost and then she got pregnant with another one that she had. We used to go shopping a lot and we would take her oldest daughter with us and she would pick out shirts for us to wear and I mean love her but they were the ugliest shirts. <laughs> she would say this is cute you should buy this and then we take it and just try it on to make her happy so we really liked to do that. All the time at work talking about her kids, spending time with them, having dates, little mom and me dates. We like to call um, her oldest one her mini me because she would take her to get her pedicures when she would go get one and she'd fix her hair just like hers. You know, they just, they were very close. I just remember her speaking very highly of them, very highly of Marco, just really loving her family. She was just a phenomenal mother and a magnificent friend. Jennifer just loved life. She really enjoyed spending time with her family. She was never in any kind of trouble or never looked for trouble. That's why nobody could have predicted the tragedy that happened to Jennifer that night. On April 15, 2015, a little after 1.30 in the morning, we were notified that there was a person shot at Illinois Masonic Hospital. Detectives and officers responded over there. 
at the hospital, they learn that two people were shot at. One person was actually shot at 4500 North Broadway. When they were shot at 4500 North Broadway, they drove as fast as they could to Illinois Masonic Hospital, where unfortunately, one of our victims, Jennifer Ponton, died from her injuries. Have you been in an accident? Have you been the victim of discrimination or had your rights violated? Have you been injured? If so, the lawyers at Hale Law would love to talk to you. We offer a free consultation. Call me, Andy Hale, 312-870-6926. 312-870-6926. I look forward to talking with you about your case. and Briley had gotten the flu the week before, and so they were sick all week. And once they got over the flu, she had texted me and said they wanted to go shopping. I checked to make sure they were okay, you know, still feeling okay, and they said yes. So uh, we went to the mall and we went to Justice and we picked out a bathing suit for Briley. And then um, Jenny treated Briley and I to um, Auntie Anne's pretzels and Cokes, and that was the last time that I saw her or talked to her. So I saw her the day before. She always would ask me to um, watch the youngest while she would go get the oldest from school. And then she did ask me to go out because it was my birthday. But I ended up just staying in. She had went to her friend's house and they ended up going to Chicago, which is a mystery to all of us, why Jenny would go all the way to Chicago. Our victim, Jennifer Ponton, who was uh, driving with a friend just out for a nice drive, only been to Chicago a couple times. They decided to just go through downtown and you know, drive along Lakeshore Drive and check out the lakefront, which a lot of people like doing. They decided that they had driven far enough and they got off at Wilson Avenue. They got turned around a little bit and they turned southbound on Broadway from Wilson Avenue in the right-hand lane. They were headed to a red light and then um, this little car came up on their bumper. And once they got to the light, they started shooting from the rear of the car all the way to the front hit the car seven or eight times, and then the car turned left, and um, Jenny's car floored it and went straight. You actually see it come speeding up next to them and just shoots at them, and then makes the quick, hard left-hand turn on the sunny side going eastbound towards the lake. And then uh, the car that Jennifer was in, you can see just speeds off, which we later learned he just kept driving towards Illinois Masonic Hospital. That morning, um, Marco had called me, and I, I forget the time. I, I want to say it was like 5 or 5.30 in the morning, and asked me where Jenny was. So I went and looked in the guest room, and of course she wasn't there, so I went into Hillary's room and woke her up, flipped on her light, <laughs> and said, Jenny's missing. You know, I had gotten up and started making phone calls to some of her friends and no one had heard anything or anything like that. Hillary started calling the police stations and the hospitals trying to find if anybody had, if she had gone anywhere. One of her friends had messaged me on Facebook and asked for us to meet at her house. Um, she had something to tell us. Hillary and her, her friend at the time that was here with us went. We went over there and she had ended up telling us that she had gone to Chicago that night and had been shot and I didn't believe her. He had taken Jenny to the hospital, talked to the police, and then he found a ride and came home and he went to this girl's house. I ended up calling the hospital that they claimed she was at and the woman wouldn't tell me anything except that she had checked in there. 
but that she couldn't tell me anything over the phone and that they needed us to come up there. And then I knew it was real. I had missed a few phone calls in the morning. I didn't return them and then I got to work and people were asking me if I had heard about it, if I had heard what happened to her and of course I had no idea what they were talking about. So I um, returned the phone call of a friend that had, that had called me and I missed the call. And she just told me what happened. I don't think I fully processed until a few days later. This incident happened April 15, 2015, a little after 1.30 in the morning, and unfortunately Jennifer was um, shot in the head and died from her injuries. And, uh, you know, it's just really a shame. Um, you know, wrong place, wrong time, and mistaken identity, unfortunately. I'm Lisa Guillen from Case Files Chicago, and we like to feature your case on our show. If you know of an unsolved homicide from the Chicago area, our team wants to help you close the case. Please visit our website at www.casefileschicago.com. While you're there, you can also view our database of unsolved murders that need your assistance. Only by working together can we solve these crimes and help heal our city. Thank you, Chicago, and stay safe. On April 15, 2015, a little after 1.30 in the morning, we were notified that there was a person shot at Illinois Masonic Hospital. Our victim, Jennifer Ponton, who was uh, driving with a friend just out for a nice drive, only been to Chicago a couple times. They're going for a drive down Lakeshore Drive, just enjoying a nice spring night. And they got off near the Wilson area, and they got turned around a little bit, and they turned southbound on Broadway from Wilson Avenue in the right-hand lane, a car drove up on them very quickly and shot up the car. When I called the hospital and they had told me that she was there, I immediately started screaming because I just, just thought it couldn't be real. I was just so hysterical. I ended up calling my mom and telling her this happened and to get ready because we were going to come pick her up and go to the hospital. I was hysterical. I could barely speak. I screamed hysterically into the phone. <sighs> she just, I think she just kept saying no, like that's not true, no. And I said, yeah, I called the hospital. She, they checked her in. With this situation, it's a little bit interesting because Jennifer was in the uh, passenger seat of the car. Her friend was driving the car, and once the shots rang out, he actually drove straight to the hospital. So it took a few minutes for the officers and the detectives to find out what had actually happened until they showed up at the hospital. We picked her up. and then we all drove up to the hospital. We headed for Chicago after that. It was Hillary and I and Marco, and we went straight to the hospital. The police were waiting, of course, and grabbed Marco and started questioning him. And they took us to another room. Long story short, some detectives came in with her wallet, some of her belongings, and asked us if this was her, and we said yeah, and that's when they told us that um, she had passed away. The whole thing was just shocking to me. Um, I mean, once you hear something like that, it's like there's a million questions. Why was she there? What was she doing? Who was she with? Who would do this? So I think that kind of was what was going through all of our heads at that point. This incident happened April 15, 2015, a little after 1.30 in the morning. So what happens is, is a midnight detective goes out and midnight detectives don't normally hang on to their murders or their scenes that's passed off to a day detective. So when I came in at seven o'clock in the morning, I was told what was going on and the case got assigned to me and I immediately went out to the, to the scene, which was uh, 4500 North Broadway in the Uptown area and uh, met with the detective. I relayed the news to my manager because she actually was asking about it as well. Um, and she just instantly broke down. So um, 
it was very hard at work. Everyone was definitely affected by it. I don't, I think about her every single day, not one single day. It goes by that I don't think about her. I wish that it could have been me and not her. She, she had everything to live for. You never think something like this is gonna happen to you. Especially being from like a nice area. Like you just don't expect something like this to happen. This is uh, the Uptown area. It's 4500 North Broadway, which is basically Montrose, Sunnyside, Wilson. It's a mixed community up there. Truman College is up over there. It's a very diverse community, but unfortunately there are also some gang problems over there. There's a lot of shootings over there, and uh, there's a little bit of a gang war going on, especially at this time. Back in April of 2015, there was a big gang war going on over there. I wish that I would have went out, because I don't think this would have happened if I had gone out with her. I feel like it is my fault. She wanted to go out and had really nobody to go out with her, so she had asked me, you know, to take me out for my birthday, and I just, I just didn't want to go. But I wish every day that I would have gone. Have you been in an accident? Have you been the victim of discrimination or had your rights violated? Have you been injured? If so, the lawyers at Hale Law would love to talk to you. We offer a free consultation. Call me, Andy Hale, 312-870-6926. 312-870-6926. I look forward to talking with you about your case. On April 15th, 2015, a little after 1.30 in the morning, we were notified that there was a person shot at Illinois Masonic Hospital. Our victim, Jennifer Ponton, who was uh, driving with a friend just out for a nice drive, only been to Chicago a couple times. They're going for a drive down Lakeshore Drive, just enjoying a nice spring night. And they got off near the Wilson area and they got turned around a little bit and they turned southbound on Broadway from Wilson Avenue in the right-hand lane a car drove up on him very quickly and shot up the car. She clearly had been scared to have bullets flying past your face and then eventually shot and killed. They took my sister, my best friend. I can't go to my sister anymore for advice or to tell her things. Three years is a long time of people not sleeping at night, knowing that there's still awful people out there who did this to her and are okay, are okay with it. They're getting away with it. They're going on with their everyday life, acting like everything's fine. When there's two little girls here in town who like no longer have their mother. Well, we've come up with a pretty good theory as to what we believe happened, you know, from interviewing people, which led us to believe who might be responsible for this. Um, unfortunately, um, we're not at the point yet to arrest them. This is still an ongoing investigation. Our strong belief is, is that she was mistaken for some wannabe gangbanger rapper who was posting online and taunting a rival gang over there. Uh, we had since learned that he was driving a car similar in car and color description as Jennifer, and we believe, unfortunately, it was wrong place, wrong time, and mistaken identity and you know now we have this uh, mother of two who was just out for a nice drive and you know her life is over with her family's lives are shattered and I, I've come to I've come to I've talked with uh, Sue numerous times on this the mom I've kept in touch with her I I've, I've tried to follow up on all leads on this and we're continuing to work on it but um, you know th this one's a rough case this one's a rough case. 
It would mean everything to get justice. I mean, obviously, we're never gonna get her back. I think it means a lot for all of us and for her children, for her family, to not have these people out in the streets. We don't know who they are or what they're doing. For me personally, I just don't want this to happen again. I don't want somebody else's mother to be taken, someone else's child to be taken. It's horrible. I hope, I pray that if somebody knows anything that they would either call the, the police department, the detectives, or this show and give them any information, any, even if it's something you don't think is significant, you never know. It just might be that one little thing that will be, will change the whole thing. We're looking for help on this from anybody from the community. Maybe you were one of the individuals in the car that you didn't know what you were getting involved with. These cars were traveling southbound on Broadway from Wilson heading towards the Target, which is Sunnyside. The offenders fled eastbound, which is a left-hand turn on Sunnyside going towards the lakefront. My daughter was two at the time when this happened, so it's really hard from both perspectives, thinking from the child's perspective, I don't have a mother anymore, and as a mother, knowing your baby is gone. That's something I still struggle with. It makes me hurt more to like think that. It makes me hurt more to be like, she's not here for them, or, or they don't have her. That's not okay. You know, we're right there. We're almost at the finish line. We just need a little bit more to bring this person to justice and get some peace for this family. If you have any information on this, you can get a hold of me, Detective Mark Levitt, at 312-744-8261, and you can remain anonymous. I would thank her for being the best sister and always sticking up for me, even though we had our share of fights, but I thought she was just the best thing and I love her. I would tell her that I love her very much and I miss her more than she could ever imagine. I'd give anything to have her back. The cases featured on tonight's episode remain unsolved and we need your help. If you have any information on tonight's episode or any of the cases featured on the show, please give the detectives a call. We need our communities to come together so we can take back our streets and make our neighborhoods safe again.